Hello, welcome to the Bernina 880 Mastery Live. Our lesson today is Meet the Machine with Susan Fears. Thank you, Catherine. Welcome, everyone. We are going to step through the 880 in a series of classes. Um, our first one is Meet the Machine. Um, our next session is going to be about stitches, working with 9 millimeter stitches and some combinations. Uh, not directionally challenged. Did you know that this machine sews in multiple directions, 360 degrees? And so we're going to experience the tools and the creative features surrounding that um, method. Uh, we're going to design stitches with the stitch designers. We're, we're going to look at um, things that make our sewing smoother, things like automatic buttonhole foot, the Bernina stitch regulator, dual feed, and a few other things. And then our last two sessions we will spend on working with embroidery, uh, a brief intro, and then we'll also work with some of the great tools that you can do with the 880 and embroidery, such as endless embroidery shaping and additional things. So in our session today, we're going to work with Meet the Machine, and this is just going to give you an overview of the buttons, the icons, navigation, and how to set the machine up for how you want to sew. So let's meet the machine. What you're going to notice is that all of the icons and buttons are on the front of the machine. So everything is here. It's a large machine, and so for comfort, everything is on the front of the machine. The start-stop button is either red or green. It's an illuminated button. It is a start-stop button to help you sew, but you can also press it quickly to hover. So let's say that you are positioning your work and your foot is down, but when you raise it up because you have that extra clearance, sometimes it's too far to, to see if the foot's really going to come down exactly where you want. So you can use hover. And hover is just a quick tap on the start-stop button and it will raise the presser foot just ever so slightly, but enough to give you room to move your fabric or your project to reposition it for the way, the position that you need for it to be. When the button is green, it means it's all systems go. You're ready to stitch. If you see it red for some reason, it means there's something that's not quite set up just right yet. The button below that is your quick reverse. It also can be programmed to be backstepping. The machine right out of the box is programmed as quick reverse, and this is the button that you press when you want to just go backwards in stitching to lock a stitch. The slide speed control is above the, the green button or the start stop button and this regulates the speed at which you're sewing with or without the foot control as well as your speed when you are embroidering. And there are specific deck techniques that you want to slow the machine speed down from time to time. Then our two large knobs to the right of the screen, that is your stitch width knob and your stitch length knob. But occasionally you'll see uh, the length indicated by your traditional stitch length knob will be your pattern length. And we'll talk about that a little bit later uh, in our program. So as you adjust the stitch width knob, the top knob, you'll see the number reflect um, above the stitch alternate area and any changes are always reflected in yellow. The stitch or pattern length button will show you what that stitch length or pattern length is also on the side of the machine. So we will see a little bit more about setting those numbers uh, in just a little bit. A few more buttons and knobs right below those two large multifunction knobs is your uh, the way to move your needle position. So two little arrows, you just touch the arrows right or left. There are 11 total needle positions and as you move them to the right or the left, your screen will reflect what needle position you are in. As well as, if you look at the little close-up um, in the right-hand part of the screen, you can see exactly where the stitch has moved in relationship to the foot. So that's a fantastic guide for giving you an accurate judgment of, do I need it two to the left or three? Sometimes that's a great thing to look at when you are doing uh, top stitching and edge stitching. So in keeping with a very clean and pretty machine, there are very few buttons on, on the front of the machine. So over there, right above your needle, you'll see, or to the left of your needle, you'll see six small buttons. Uh, starting from the with pattern end, uh, you'll see that is your traditional pattern end button, but it comes programmed with a knot and a cut. Um, so if you are using the machine right out of the box and you select pattern end, then it will 
knot and cut as well as go to pattern end. And what this does is it allows you to sew to the end of the pattern without you having to watch the, every needle, needle point or needle stitch that it is making. So automatically it knows where the end of the pattern is and it will stop. The uh, button below that is securing. Uh, this can is, just adds a knot to what you are stitching. This can also be programmed to cut after the knot, so you can add things to this. The thread cutter, the scissor, will just give you a cut any time that you need it, but it can also be programmed to add the knot, so that's, that's a good feature. Um, moving over, you have your automatic threading button. This is the button you'll always press to automatically thread the needle and to put the thread in the take-up lever. We're going to talk a little bit more about the importance of this button for every time you thread um, a little bit later. Needle up down, this button raises the needle up or down. It just moves it to its next position depending on where it is. The pressure foot up and down, there is no pressure foot lift in the back of the machine if you're coming from a traditional machine. The dual feed is back there now, so to raise the pressure foot up and down, the button is on the front of the machine. When you are working with needle stop up or down, the button on the front of the machine only moves the needle to the next position. So it will either drop the needle or move the needle up. If you want to program the needle to stop up or down, you need to do that on screen. So looking at your stitch alternate area or your main screen, you'll see a little needle uh, in the upper left hand corner. When the needle's above that dash, that means it's programmed to stop up. If you touch that icon, and you'll see it has a little shaded button, and it'll drop below the line, that means it's programmed to stop down. So just moving the needle up or down is done with a button. If you want to program it to stop up or down, you do that on screen. There is no button for pattern begin on the machine. So where you will find pattern begin is on screen. And you will only see this icon if you're not at the beginning of the pattern. So you're stitching along, and you're like, this stitch is cool. I think I'll put this on my permanent project. And now you're wondering, are you at pattern begin? Because of course, you always want to start at the beginning. If you see the little circle with the triangle and the dash at the top where the arrow is pointing, that is your pattern begin icon. If you see that on screen, you tap the icon on screen, the needle resets back to the middle, or back to, I'm sorry, back to the beginning, and you are ready to, to start from the beginning of the pattern. You also can take a look within the stitch pattern on your screen. And you may notice there's a little dot in the pattern. This tells you where the needle currently is. This icon, a lot easier to know at a glance. You don't have to look for the little white dot. Uh, this dot moves throughout the sewing pattern as you are stitching. Not that we're watching the screen while we're stitching most of the time, but when you stop, you always know where the needle is in relationship to the stitch. Again, if you see this icon on screen, you are not at pattern begin. Touch the on-screen icon, it resets you back to the beginning, and now you can stitch. Your user, part of your user interface includes a status bar on the left hand side of the screen. The orientation of the status bar is in how you would actually thread the machine. So it starts with tension because that's actually the top part of the machine as the thread is put into the take up lever. Then as you, if you think about threading, you're going to go down to the needle, then below that is your presser foot. Then there is presser foot pressure. Then there is your stitch plate, then there are your feed dogs, and then below that is your bobbin. And then you also have a clock um, on the machine. Um, you, you will also notice that any time that you are moving um, the stitch, you have a realistic view of your presser foot. Your stitch categories look like little um, tabbed folders over on the side will take you through each of your stitches. So you've got practical stitches, your decorative, your alphabet, buttonholes, quilting, and then two other icons that we'll talk about later. Over to the far right are your system settings, and this is how you help customize the machine for the way you want to sew. It's also a great way to reference your tutorial information or create a consultant. There is a help. There's an echo button and there's a clear button. And we'll work with these throughout our series that we're doing. We'll also see those a little bit more in today's session. So our status bar icons moving back over. We have the tension. 
and you just see the words written out next to each of the icons. Your needle selection allows you to tell the machine what needle you have selected or you have put in the machine such as a double or a wing needle. Presser foot selection, we'll talk about why this is important. Uh, you can establish how much pressure you want the foot exerting onto your fabric. And there is a needle plate security. Your feed dog indicator, this is just an indicator. Um, it will tell you if they are up or down. It's also uh, selectable so that you can raise or lower them yourself. Your bobbin status, and then there is a clock and an alarm. Anytime you make a change to any of those items on the status bar, there's a yellow indication to let you know that there has been a change. So right now, my straight stitch has been altered to be a tension of three. I have a wing needle in. I'm sewing with foot 20D which is an open embroidery foot with the dual feed. I have altered my uh, pressure foot pressure to 32. I'm sewing with the 5 millimeter stitch plate and my feed dogs are lowered. Now that's quite a combination, probably wouldn't give me very good results, but that is um, everything that has been changed. Your system settings, you have your home icon, this helps you so go between sewing and embroidery. Your setup, this is where you can reprogram those buttons that we talked about earlier uh, as we looked at the buttons to the left of the needle. Uh, it's also a place you can customize the screens for the way you want it to look. Your tutorial gives you good information about new techniques. Um, create, creative Consultant helps you know how to sew on different types of fabrics. The Help helps you know what the icons are, especially as you are learning. And you work with the help feature as I have a question, you touch the question mark, and then you touch the item you have a question about. Echo will, when you, let's say you're sewing and you don't want to turn the machine off because you don't want to lose all of your settings that are stored temporarily, you can select Echo and it will preserve uh, your settings, reduce the power utilized on the machine, dim your screen, and um, allow you to walk away in a uh, time or, um, energy savings setting for your machine. And then the clear feature will clear things that you have set, which we will look at also. So let's talk about personalizing this machine for the way you want to sew. And you would do that through setup. So my window is uh, has a little arrow pointing to something that looks like gears. This is all part of the setup, so if you select the gears and then you select the person, this allows you to personalize the 880 with a color, eight different colors to select from, as well as eight different textures to select from. And you can select this up at any time that you want. It, you, uh, so you might want to be pink for your heirloom project and then maybe you're sewing for the holidays and you feel like having a red screen. So all of this can change as you want it to change. The little check marks indicate what you have currently selected. And you want to start learning how to navigate using the breadcrumbs. Every time that you select a an item, an icon, um, or you go into a different menu, it leaves a trail of breadcrumbs telling you where you are and where you came from. So what I have circled up here, this is our my breadcrumb trail, is I'm in personalization and if you remember, this is exactly the little the same icon that we use to get here. So this is the screen I'm in, is the personalization. But I'm in setup. So if I wanted to stay in setup but set something else, then I would want to select the setup icon and it would take me back to this screen. Rather than exiting out of setup and then coming back into setup and then starting over. So it's a nicer way to work. It will save you time. It may take you a little time to get used to that and we'll work with that throughout our sessions because the breadcrumb navigation can truly help you be more efficient um, while you're working um, on your machine. So we're at this screen or select, you're going to select the setup breadcrumb and now we're going to go into the sewing settings. Your machine comes programmed with the machine to tie off every time it begins to sew. 
if you are primarily a quilter, this is not a setting that you're going to love because you do not want to knot every time you are piecing. So this is just a little switch. You just touch it and it turns to red and now it is deactivated. So you may, for the way that you sew, you may never want this on. So you would leave it in this mode, but it's very easy to turn on and off. You just tap that little area and it changes. Another feature that you may want to program, and this is a new feature for the 880, is a programmable foot control. Bernina foot controls have been dual duty for a long time. They have always allowed you to use the, uh, to take one, if you put your whole foot on the foot control, which is how it is designed to be used, if you tap with your toe, the needle or the machine will take one full stitch. So if your needle is stopped down uh, and you press it with your toe, it will take that stitch and stop with your needle down. If the needle's up, it'll do the same thing, but the important thing is it takes one complete step. If you use your heel, then you can heel, what we call heel down, or use the kick, it will take a half a stitch, half a stitch. So you could also drop the needle uh, with the foot control versus using the button on the machine, um, but it will just advance the needle to the next spot. But now with the um, programmable foot control, you have another option. How it comes set up for you out of the box is the normal way, where it will raise, uh, it'll raise and lower the needle. If you select the heart, then you can program it to knot and what kind of knot you want. Do you want four knots kind of all together, or do you want a, you know, packed stitches, little four knots, um, that little running stitches, or do you want less than four? You can increase or decrease that number. Do you want to add a, a scissor? Do you want to add the cutting to that? And then do you want the presser foot to raise up or down when you're finished? So you can program all of those things onto the very simple feature of healing down with your foot control. You just need to remember what you have it set at when you are doing different techniques. Because if you like having the cutter attached to the foot control, and that's an industry, uh, comes from the industry, so it's something that's very useful there, it is not going to be so handy for you if you're trying to pivot around a corner and you go to heel down to drop the needle and it cuts. So just be aware of how you have it set uh, when you are sewing. And of course, if you don't remember, all you have to do is select setup your sewing settings, and then the, the foot control to reprogram it. So now we are a couple layers into setup, but we still want to stay in setup. So select the breadcrumb for setup, the one that's being pointed to, and now it just takes us back to that, uh, up, it takes us up one le level to the programmable buttons, and that's what we want to do next. So all of those buttons that we looked at at the very beginning, they're customizable. So we can customize the pattern end. We can customize the needle up, um, the presser foot up and down. All of these things we can program. So let's take a look at one of the a very exciting thing to program. When you have your needle to set down, you are able to uh, program in hover. So the needle is programmed to stop down. So you want to select this icon the one that the arrow is pointing to, and now this is where you can select the what you want the presser foot to do. So the presser foot can do one of three things when you have the needle programmed to step, stop down. The presser foot can be down, which is your left option. The presser foot can raise its to up, full up, is your right option, but in the middle is a partial raise. And this is an, an automatic cover that when you have the needle set to stop down, the foot will automatically raise for you so that you can do your next thing, such as pivot. Most of the time when we set the needle to stop down, it's because we do want to pivot. So just go ahead and let the, the foot already be programmed for that pivot feature, and it's one less thing you have to do. The foot automatically raises, and then to start sewing again, all you do is press your foot control or your start-stop button, and it lowers the foot and begins sewing for you. So go ahead and close out of this screen. 
and this is a picture of what happens with the automatic cover. I'm just coming out of a corner and the presser foot raises automatically and I can make the pivot and then I would start to sew by pressing the foot control and then I would be ready to go on my next on my next stitching journey. One of the other features that you may want to use is setting the alarm using with your clock icon and one great advantage of having the clock displayed on your status bar is that no matter if you are sewing or embroidering the clock is always visible. When you select it you're going to be able to set the alarm time and a message. This is something that you may do frequently and why it is here. Uh, and of course, you know, it has an on-off. You select, select the time that you want it to ring and it will also, you can also program in a message. Setting the time, however, is done through setup. This setting the time is not something that you would do every day or every week. You're probably going to set the time once. So this is located through setup. So I didn't really step us through getting there, but if you look at the breadcrumb trail, I bet you can find your way there. So you would select the setup icon, which is on your um, system settings bar. Then you would select the icon of the machine, then the icon of the wrench, and then you'll see the time or you'll see the clock. You're able to set the clock as to a 24-hour clock or an AM PM, so that'd be a 12 hour clock. Um, so you can set this for exactly how you want it to show. When you turn the machine on, it always starts up uh, with a straight stitch, so you are ready to sew right away as soon as you begin the machine. There are different categories out to the side, so there are your practical stitches, your decorative stitches, alphabets, buttonholes and your quilting stitches are not in your decorative stitch folder. They are, uh, uh, they're out, on, they have their own category, so they're very easily accessible from that side panel. Your decorative stitch menu, once you select the decorative stitch category, you'll, you're you are presented with a series of other folders. This is page one of two, so you can scroll beyond to see the rest of them. There are a lot of different stitches there. Um, we want to talk about a couple of different ways or ways to work with the stitch length and the stitch width knob because it may be a little, it's not going to be a different operation than what you're used to. It works exactly the same, but what you see on the screen may be a little different than what you've seen before. So I want to take a little time to explain how this works. So your stitch width, that's the number that is 7.3 at the top of my, on, on my screen. And I have gotten there by selecting a zigzag stitch and changing the width to 7.3 and turning that knob to the right. And you can try that. So select stitch 2 and uh, change your stitch width to 7.3. And it shows me what that number is. If I touch that icon of the number, so I'm going to touch the 7.3 on the screen, it brings up another menu. And it shows me that I can also adjust the stitch width with this little menu. When I'm in a practical, the practical stitch stitches, these numbers will be the same. Stitch width is stitch width. If I want to clear this, then I'm going to have, uh, I can touch the yellow bounded box and I can also touch the clear. So you have two ways of clearing this back to its normal settings. Stitch length. Okay, we're still in our practical menu. Uh, I have adjusted the length with the knob and it is set to a 4. If I touch the icon of the 4, I'm presented with another menu and these numbers while I'm in practical stitches are the same. When we get to decorative stitches, these numbers will, could be different, so we'll take a look at that also. So stitch length with method 2 is I touch the 4.0, that, that's the yellow number on screen next to the presser foot. It brings up a second menu, and now I can use the plus or minus. I could use the, the little slider bar to make an adjustment here. When I'm in practical stitches, the stitch length is only the stitch length. When I'm in decorative stitches, I am seeing a pattern length. So right now I've selected a, a decorative stitch, number 416. 
and the length that it is showing me is 12.4. That is the pattern length. But if I want to see exactly what the stitch length is, the traditional number you might be used to seeing, then I want to touch that 12.4. It'll bring up that other menu, and now I can adjust the stitches within that, that pattern length. So this is handy if you're working with thick threads or thin threads, and you want a more or less fill within that decorative stitch. So you have a couple of different ways that you can alter your pattern. Your, your length will show you two things. Pattern length, the decorative stitches. If you're in practical stitches, it gives you the stitch length. Let's talk a little bit about threading. You have a thread stand. You want to extend the um, the arm, the, the thread stand piece, till its fullest height. That way you will have the optimum release of your thread. Um, the little uh, base of that platform pivots in and out, so you can set it for how it's most comfortable for you. This type of uh, spool holder will work with large, small, and large cones very easily. There's never any drag on the thread uh, because it's going up to the thread stand. So threads are released evenly no matter what kind of spools you're using. There are three spool pins. There is one that is dedicated for bobbin winding. Uh, it's, and, and you'll notice a little icon underneath the bobbin winding one. It's also slanted just a little bit um, to help you identify that. So your multi-spool holder setup looks like this, and you'll see the little diagram for how, how we would wind a bobbin. Inside your accessory kit, you, will, you have a little small, one of the smallest spool holders, um, spool caps, and that's for when you are working with the smaller threads that are narrow and when you're getting to the end of the threads. You can put this on the pin and it will keep the spool from traveling up the pin with the spool of thread. When you put a bobbin on the bobbin winding pin on the front of the machine, it automatically brings up the window for bobbin winding. It also will show you on the status bar a little yellow circle going around the bobbin indicating that you have a bobbin on the spindle and did you want to wind a bobbin. You can set the speed at which the bobbins are wound, so you see the little RPM. So you can drag that slider or move their plus and minus and adjust the speed at which the bobbin is wound. This is good for threads that might that might normally be have a stretch introduced if you are winding it too fast. Uh, monofilament is a thread that I wind on a slower speed. Uh, if I'm winding elastic because I have a technique I'm doing with elastic in the bottom, I usually wind that a little bit slower. If I'm winding um, threads for a bobbin play, I may wind that a little bit slower depending on what it's coming off of. So these are things you can do. Then the the uh, gauge underneath that where it says 0, 25, 50, and 100, that is, uh, shows you the status of the wind. You will notice beneath there you'll see 25%, 50, and 100. So you can set how, you, how full you want these bobbins to be wound. So you have just a little bit left of your project and you have a jumbo bobbin. So you may not want to wind it the full 100%. You may just want to wind it a 25%. So you can pre-program that before you start so you don't have to watch it. You'll also notice two icons. One says man and one says auto. The man is for manual and the auto is for auto. So when the, the auto is depressed and you have selected 25, 50, or 100, it's automatically going to wind to those set levels. But let's say you don't even need 25% of, of a wound bobbin. You, you need less than that. Then select manual. And when you have manual and you select the little green button, that bobbin only winds as long as you're holding down the green button. So you can you still ha you have the, you have the best of all worlds. You can pre-program how much you want it to wind, or you can press and hold to how much you want it to wind. Uh, either case, to activate the bobbin winding mechanism, you do have to press that little green play button. If you think about the the buttons on your remote for operating the TV, that's your play button. So now it's time to thread the hook for sewing. So we're going to thread by putting the bobbin onto the spool pin. The bobbin has, is 
the bobbin case has come out of the machine. It goes onto that spindle. And your first guide is where the little arrow is pointing to. The thread needs to go into that first slit. And then you, if you will take the thread towards the back, if you looked on, around the left side, you'll see there's a thread cutter. You want to take the thread in that direction, and you want to let the bobbin spin around twice. Uh, what I get in the habit of doing is I take, I let the thread rest on my finger, and it's going to go back. So. Um, it's not going to go right behind this little piece. It's actually going further behind that little piece. So take it further to the back. Pull the thread so that it, the bobbin spins two revolutions. When, it's, when it is spinning those two revolutions, you're actually having the time to properly seat the thread in the tension, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Once you have that done, then you want to cut on the thread cutter, so just pull straight down to cut the thread. When the bobbin thread is in the correct position, you see the green arrow? That's the correct position for the bobbin threading. So by pulling the thread, those two revolutions, you actually are giving the thread time to work its way in the middle of this fork. If you have incorrectly threaded it, maybe you didn't pull it the two revolutions, all you did was get it to the back and cut, it's not underneath this tension guide, um, you probably are not going to get good results. Included with the machine accessories is what looks like a dental mirror, but it's a little mirror on a stick. You can place the mirror underneath the bobbin so that you can see this, hopefully not this. The mirror, I use it to verify that things are in the right place when you're getting started. I would not try to hold the mirror and thread the machine at the same time. I think that's just not going to work very well for you. And I've seen people who've come to classes trying to manage all of that, and it's difficult for them. You want to learn to thread the machine by feel. You'll be able to feel something a little bit different when we go into threading this for embroidery, because when we go into embroidery, we actually work the thread into this little paper clip area. Uh, and I will, we'll go through that when we talk about embroidery. But if you're trying to manage the thread and hold the mirror, you're probably going to not be very successful. So my recommendation is that you thread like we discussed. So you're into that first slit. You pull the thread towards the back behind the bobbin case, and you aim it for that cutter. You let the bobbin spin twice, and then you cut the thread. Then pick up your mirror, double check that what you have is this and then your bobbin is set for sewing. Now it's time for threading the needle. So we have our thread on our spindle. Remember that outer thread spool, the slanted one, that's dedicated for bobbin winding. So my sewing spindles are the other two. And they, the um, thread goes up to the guide right above it. The bobbin winding thread stand has two, has a little forked, a little V'd out area where you slide the thread in for bobbin winding. You're not using that for sewing. That actually will cause extra drag on your thread and affect your tension, probably not in the way you want. So when you are sewing, you only want to use one of the single guides for taking your thread up to the thread stand into that single guide. Then you notice there's a little area where I have circled at the side of the machine. There's a little metal guide that's in that corner. The thread needs to hit that guide to tell the machine that you are ready to thread the machine. And when you take the thread, what I like to do is I take both hands and I floss it into the corner of the machine and I make sure that that thread hits that metal disc. That tells the machine that threading is getting ready to happen. Prepare yourself for the thread to get there. And you'll hear a series of things happening at the other end of the machine. You kind of want to wait till all of that noise stops. At that time, the little threading button becomes lit up. When that threading button has lit up on your machine, you know it's safe to proceed. When you are first threading the machine, you probably will be very, you probably be slower at this, and you will, there's no way, could get ahead of the machine. But as you get more comfortable, 
you can thread the machine without the machine being ready to receive the thread. So just a good rule of thumb is to wait until the threading um, noise has stopped and then you can proceed or wait for the light. I'm still holding the thread with my right hand, but with my left hand I'm taking the thread across the top of the machine, kind of in a diagonal fashion like you see, and then I'm going to let it slide across the top of the machine so that the thread goes behind the little metal disc that you probably can't see if you're sitting down, but if you stand up and take a look you'll see a little metal piece that sticks up right behind that little track. Uh, when you're sewing with one thread, it needs to go behind. If you're sewing with a twin needle and you have two threads, one goes in back and one goes in front. I'm holding the thread with my right hand as I'm doing this across the top, and I am holding the thread so that I have taut threading going throughout the machine. You're going to come down. You're going to go in front of the needle into a little guide. There's some little, uh, there's a little gray uh, piece that drops down. This little, a little slit area that you see right here. The thread rests in there. It goes back to the cutter and from back to front, and then you cut the thread. Now, this image that you're looking at on the screen is an animation that's built into the machine. So once you have initiated the threading process, this animation is showing on the screen for you. So if at any time you're like wondering what's next or did I, do I need to do this, look on the screen because the answers are right there. Take the thread from back to front, pull straight down and cut the thread. And then put, push the the illuminated button to put the thread uh, in the needle. That's what you see. What you don't see is that it is also putting the thread in the take-up lever. And if you think about threading a machine traditionally, how you, you know, would, would take it to that take-up lever, to that first tension guide, you would go down and up and then back down to get it back into the uh, the thread path of the machine. The machine is doing a lot of that for you behind the scenes. So no matter what you are doing, you always have to press the automatic threading button, even if you don't want the machine, that little arm to thread the needle. So we're going to take a look at that. So there are some cases where manual threading is necessary, such as you have a twin needle in the machine, or you have a wing needle in the machine, or you have certain presser feet on the machine to where if the machine were, to, if the arm were to swing to thread the needle, it would hit something, which would not be good. So there are cases where manual threading is necessary. So at, in the process of using the machine for threading, when you're threading, the animation is on the screen. So what you see here, you want to touch this button right here, which is your manual threading icon. And what it will do is tell the machine, OK, she doesn't want me to thread the needle, but she does need me to put the thread in the take-up lever. So you will still press the button. And you will hear something happen, but you will not see the presser foot or you will not see the arm thread swing across to thread the needle. So inside your accessory kit, you have another accessory. That's this little white plasticky piece with a slit, and that little slit has a wire. That slides down the front of the needle and pushes the thread through the eye of the needle as you are going down. This requires a gentle touch, a light touch. Uh, there is um, an animation to show you how this works on the machine, um, but this may be something that you want to practice while you're in class with somebody who has done this before. It's a very easy device to use, but if you go at it too hard, then you can bend that little needle or the little wire that pushes the thread through the eye of the needle. So I mentioned, uh, when will you use manual threading? Um, of course, you could do it anytime you want, but then you sort of miss out on one of the cool features of having an 880 is that automatic threading. But it is a must with double and triple needles, wing needles, and uh, needles that are size 60, and with selected presser feet but you still have to press that illuminated button in order for the thread to be placed in the take-up lever. So double needles, very fun. When you have told the machine you have a double needle on, what this does for you is it instills some security with other selections that you make. It also shows you 
double vision on the screen of what your stitch is going to look like, but the little image of what's been stitched out, you can get some very fun effects. So it is something that you do want to do. Uh, it is really quite fun. Feet that require manual threading would be the walking foot, the leather roller foot, the ruffler, and the cut and sew. If you have an old binder number 88, that's also another foot that, I'm sorry, 85, that's also a foot that would require uh, manual threading. So when it comes time to remove the thread for your next project, you want to get in the habit of snipping the thread where the thread enters the machine. The thread is only designed to move through the machine in the way it would if you were sewing. It is never meant to ever come backwards through the machine. Uh, by pulling it backwards, the thread could have wound up onto something, um, in which case you could take something out of alignment. Uh, you also drag a lot of lint through the machine that doesn't need to be placed there. If it gets stuck, it's usually going to get stuck in an area behind the screen the touch screen, which is a place you can't get to and can't get the thread out. So you don't want to be pulling the thread backwards. You want to snip at the uh, entrant, entry point for the machine thread, and then you pull it out in front of the needle. That keeps the thread traveling through the machine in the exact same manner as it was intended if you were sewing. A couple of other things setting up for sewing, uh, the freehand system. This is an amazing device, helps you raise and lower the presser foot, allowing you to keep your hands on your work. So uh, this is a fantastic device. Uh, it's included with the machine and a handy way to stitch. The slide on table with the guide will give you an extended surface, uh, and the surface is marked with different guidelines for different seams or settings that you might want to sew to. And then the guide, you can be attached at any position on the tray just by depressing the little uh, button on the guide, uh, but it moves, can be on the right or the left of the, of the presser foot depending on the guide that you need. There are a couple of other accessories in the kit that you may not have seen before that may be odd. So let's talk a little bit about those ones that you haven't seen before and may not know exactly what you're going to do with them. One of them is a bar and two adjustable guides. These bars uh, go into the holes of the feet. They work with the regular feet as well as the D feet. They slide into the openings of the presser foot uh, where the holes are, and then you can attach the guide. They can go to the right or the left as you see pictured, uh, and you'll notice they are a little different. Uh, one's a little bit longer, one has a solid arm, this has a, a split arm, and it's a little bit shorter. So you have an adjustable guide that rides on top of the fabric, uh, and then you have an adjustable guide, an edge guide, that rides at the edge of the fabric. So this helps you get additional guides, seam guides, when you need them for your projects. Another thing that you may find in your kit is the pin tucking device. Uh, with this machine, if you want to do corded pin tucks, um, then you need something to help manage the cord for you. Traditionally, we have done this by running this cord up through the uh, bobbin area with the bobbin door open and running it up through the stitch plate. With this machine, it's not possible to sew with the bobbin door open. So you have a device that screws into the top of the machine through those, those little screw holes. You have the little screwdriver included. You attach this to the machine and it will manage the cord while you might want to do corded pin tucks. Another piece that you have is a magnifier adapter. So this comes with the machine, this slides into the side of the machine, you'll see a little hole there, and this allows you to uh, if you want to work with the magnifier lens set, this is an optional accessory, gives you, uh, you know, maybe you, you'd like to see a little bit closer to the needle. There are three different magnifications. The adapter is included and the magnifier just fit on top of that bracket. It does swing up out of the way when you don't need to use it, so you can uh, put them on and just leave them there. Another device is the multifunction tool, which we will find very handy to use when we need to open the little cover behind um, or above the 
That's where the B880 is printed on. So that little door comes off, and this the longer side of the multifunction tool slides into the little opening, and it, the door is on a hinge, and it'll just swing out. But this is a great place for you to find threads that pop up away from the needle, and this is where you would remove threads if you don't see it by the needle and you need to remove thread without pulling it backwards through the machine. And this is something you should work with while you're in class so that you know how to work with this. We will also use this tool when we want to work with some bobbin play. The bobbin mirror, you, we've talked about how what you would use this for, so that's a a piece that you have. You also have the manual threader, so uh, you, we looked at why we would use this. And then you have a hook cleaning tool. Your bobbin case doesn't come out. If you have threads that become trapped behind your bobbin case, you can use this tool to slice them uh, to, uh, to get them to, you know, help make them into smaller pieces, um, and then they're fine. There is a little um, section in your manual about how to use this tool, uh, and you may never have to use it, but if you do, it is there. A stylus comes with the machine, and you have two very nice heavy-duty magnets to the right of the multifunction knobs, and this will hold the stylus in place, which is quite fantastic because the stylus is where you need it to be when you want to use it. As our session is coming to a close and you'll be moving your machine about, you should uh, be, take care in how you carry the machine. You want to carry it with your arm through the opening of the machine with the knobs facing out. Um, carrying it towards the knobs facing into you could um, cause the knobs to be damaged. Um, so we carry the machine uh, with our arm, um, sort of resting on our forearm, and to be honest, it's a very easy way to carry the machine, and we carry it with the knobs facing out. So just a little bit of FYI if you didn't know that already. And then where can you find additional information about your 880 or projects or, you know, what's going on with Bernina? So if you go to our website, across the top you see products, promos and events, and experience and support. So if you select products and you go to tutorials, you will find other tutorials about the machine. There are also tutorials packed with your machine on a DVD. And these are just designed to help you get familiar and sort of teach you how to work with some of the features on your machine. If you select the support section, you're able to download the simulator. And this is the software that lives in your B880, your Bernina 880, you can download the simulator to your computer and then you can play with the simulator um, on your computer. Uh, you will also find your firmware updates there. Anytime there is an update to the machine, you can update that yourself um, with a USB stick. There's also a little section on embroidery designs with special effects. So as you go into embroidery, there are some designs that have tufted satin areas or they are an applique design, but they have uh, tell you a little bit, give you a little more information than you may find in your manual. If you select the experience section, you'll find all kinds of cool stuff here because this is where all the projects are. So if you would like to find projects that um, are about a machine specific thing, you want to select sewing and embroidery, and you, then you'll look for ones that are geared towards the 880. Um, they usually show you a picture. This particular one uh, is about putting stitch combinations together, uh, but stitching them out in embroidery, working with endless embroidery, uh, and doing some creating. But you're able to download a PDF to have the pattern instructions. Um, and then you can follow along and create these, and they help you learn your machine while you are creating these projects. So that completes our Meet the Machine. I hope you know enough to be comfortably get started with your machine so you can do some sewing and knowing, practicing threading and setting up for sewing. In our next session, we're going to work a lot with selecting stitches, how to put some creative functions on them, um, and how to work with them in combination. So we have a lot to do in our next session, so get familiar with some of the basics so that as we move into our next session, the things that you need to do know to get started will be very easy for you. And we'll see you at session two. Thanks, everyone.